2002, I had my first breast augmentation. And just for the record, I didn't knowingly go to an ENT. After several appointments with my doctor, it wasn't actually until right before surgical prep that my dad saw the incriminating credentials. Uh, ever since then, I kind of felt like something wasn't right, and when I went to work as a patient coordinator for a plastic surgeon here in Scottsdale, I learned what a plastic surgeon really should be, as well as a lot more about breasts than any person ever needs to know. I learned that they don't just need to be board certified, they need to be board certified in plastic surgery. And the American Board of Plastic Surgery ensures that surgeons are both trained in plastics and aesthetics, which is a good thing. They've also completed surgical residency in plastics. The Arizona Medical Board website is also a really great resource. There's a lot of information on all doctors. Check it out. But there's also another organization, the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, the ASAPS, and they're probably the best resource for patients. They are comprised of the top plastic aesthetic plastic surgeons, um, and it's actually only about 25% that are invited in and at current membership right now. Um, they have really strict guidelines and ethical standards, and they also require continuing medical education units. And these units include, or these educational units include, um, keeping up to date with advances in breast implant technology. Um, there's so many options. There's smooth and textured, and that's just for the shell. And then probably the biggest debate is saline versus silicone. Saline is a silicone shell, but it's filled with sterile salt water, and it's really close to what's already in our own body. Um, they're adjustable for volume in the operating room, and each size has its own set fill volume. In a rupture, it's just, the saline is just absorbed into the body. Silicone is back on the market, and it has been for a few years. Um, a couple decades of testing got it back there. And they are set form, they're gel filled, and in a rupture, they keep their form. There's also several profiles. The moderate profile is probably the most common. It has the widest base diameter, but the shallowest projection. It's really good for patients with a wider chest wall or trying to balance out wider hips. The moderate press profile is also pretty common, and it has just a little bit more projection and a slightly smaller base diameter. It's good for patients with a more narrow chest wall or looking for a little bit more cleavage. And then there's the high profile implant. And this has the greatest, you guys are laughing, love it. <laughs> it gets better. It has the greatest projection, but the smallest base diameter. It's really good for patients with a narrow frame or looking for a lot more cleavage. And as it happens, it's what my doctor put in me. Um, I suffered from asymmetry, so my breasts were actually different sizes. And it's actually not that uncommon. Um, but he approached it a little differently. And he only put in one implant. He went through my belly button and placed a 400cc saline high-profile implant in my left breast. And it caused a great deal of nerve damage. Um, not good. <laughs> uh, because of the placement and the, the size of the implant and the type and everything that goes into it, um, they're actually a lot like mylar balloons with the edges. Um, so when I had a capsular contracture last October and those edges started to rub together because the capsule or scar tissue around my implant was tightening and squeezing it, uh, it caused a whole bunch of problems. And in March, my implant actually deflated. I woke up to a deflated implant and a deflated breast. It wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, silence. <laughs> um, there's so many, there's so much misinformation out there about breast augmentation. There's a stigma that's attached to the procedure. And yes, there are patients that seek it just for breast enlargement. There's also patients that seek it to correct asymmetry, me. Um, patients that seek it to balance out the effects of scoliosis, and patients who just want to correct their underdeveloped torso. But it's really important, regardless of the reason, to do your research, to consult with qualified surgeons and find one that really understands what you're looking for. 
I'm going into my second breast procedure and before I'm 30, and thankfully my surgeon matches all of those qualifications, and I really hope that for everyone else. Thank you. Thank you.